So you know that uh, bananas. The Savannah are, bananas? Nope, regular bananas. Oh. They are a pretty good, not great, but pretty good source of potassium. Chiquita bananas? Just regular bananas. <laughs> But Bet Online is your number one oh. source for all your sports betting needs this season. From baseball, golf, soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Kevin, that was a home run of a start. Thanks. No problem, buddy. Every single stat, every single matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over... Head on over to our online casino and get in on the game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Okay, you can find one you like. Not 149. You can find one you like. Sorry, not 151. That's right. But it's Well, actually it is. It's over. Yeah, you take the over. Head to the website today and get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to 250 smackaroonies. It's the same as dollars. Bet online. The game starts here. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to the Dumb Dad Podcast. My name is Kevin, and I'm a dumb dad. Hey, there, everybody. My name is Evan, and I'm a dumb dad. And on today's episode, Kevin is going to teach us that no matter how much fun your family could be having out at, uh, at an event, you could have more fun than them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And on this podcast, Evan really brings down the curtain on his parenting. Cheers, well buddy. Done. Cheers. <laughs> now, uh, before we get into it, we got to say it. We got to say... Housekeeping? Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Guys... If you haven't heard, I'm sure you have. We're going on tour August 5th. We're going to keep saying it. Chicago, August 6th, St. Louis, August 7th, Nashville. We're going to City Winery. The link is in our show notes. It's going to be such a fun show. We We're did our first run through today. Really, really, yeah. Full, full run through. Full run through today. Done. We had a great time. So fun. Really excited for it. Really excited for you guys to see it. Uh, hopefully, there's some more tour dates soon. But for now... If you are in that area, know people in the area, spread the word. Uh, let them know that the Dumb Dads, it's happening. It's happening. Going on tour, City Winery. We're packing like, our bags like the and bio. bringing our stuff and, and heading on out there. And we're going to be there. I'm saying it into existence because it's going to happen. It's like the for, for closer it gets, the more nervous we're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Come see us. Come see us. It's going to be a great time. There we go. Are you done? You're going to keep that? You're going to play some snood? While I talk? No, I'm making keeping my notes so I remember what to say. So I come off like a dummy. You know, keep it in the old noodle? The snoodle? I've tried that. A snood callback. Remember snood? Remember that game? No. You ever played snood? It was How do you like play uh snood? What's, what's snood? It's like um it's like a Dr. Mario. It's like you match the colors and then Oh, they it's disappear. a video game. I'm thinking I my head went to board game. There's a computer video game. There are some snood. people right now listening to this podcast screaming at their radio or mm-hmm. phone being like, I know what he's talking about. And yeah. other people going snood and they're looking at their phone going, Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The usually kids, the kids like without friends in high school played those. <laughs> usually I feel like I'm the one getting aged down me. here, but I think you really showed your hand there. Probably my age snood. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when we were in high school, it wasn't like that, that old. We're going to find out. It wasn't second. in, it wasn't in uh, black snood and white game. Snood world. Yeah. Forget life. Play Snood. Game Boy That's Advance. That's what I did. I forgot life. <laughs> Game Boy Advance. 1996. Well, the one I played on the computer was <laughs> after that. I don't know. <laughs> Look it up. Get, a, get, yourself, it up. First, get yourself a Game Boy Advance. Uh, here's, what, here's what I would like to talk about today. Yeah. Rant about. I would like to talk about just, I guess it's like a zero-sum game okay. of... Of parenting. Game themed, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's all game stuff. Here we go. Um, but it, it has to do with extracurricular. God, I have so much trouble with that word. Can't believe it came out. Curricular. Curricular. Yeah, but you get you said it better that time. I still don't like it. <laughs> I can feel when you get a little bit nervous before you have to say it. I feel like my throat's gonna like give out and go, I don't want to do this word. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't want to do this word. <laughs> You ever do that? You say a word and you're like, I don't know. My throat wants to do it. The muscles yeah. there want to do it. Anyway. 
so we, you know we're in summer so i think a part of me stupidly dumb dad of me was like you know we'll do summer camp and we'll go huh. places but like we're not gonna we're gonna do anything else like that'll be it yeah but no here we are the kids are signed up for after camp events if you will <laughs> not after school and as if they don't come home wasted enough from camp yeah it's here well here's what it is they're good. This is where it's like a zero sum game. And yeah. like, and even when it's the school year, I'm not complaining about it being after camp, but just, just sure. all, like, it's the right thing to do, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. So my daughter is in <laughs> currently in volleyball. She starts tennis tomorrow. Yeah. My son is back in by his own request. He's a soccer player. He's back in soccer. Yeah. He loves it. You can't, yeah. Listen, you can take the boy away from soccer. He took himself away from soccer. He backed away from it. But you can't. Well, it, you know what? It's just calling him back. It's going into Here, the unknown. That's the where thing. he's going. He's a super happy guy, my yeah. son. And he's got the best coach for his age. All he does is yell at these kids. He's an older man <laughs> and he just yells at them. But he has a twinkle in his eye when he does it. He knows yeah. he's being funny, but he yeah. doesn't like he's very sweet to them. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he's doing yelling at them because they're getting everything wrong. He's five. Oh, the kids are like between four and s- six, maybe. <laughs> and he's just yelling at them and they all yeah. love it. They all think it's funny. But like, I just, it just makes me think like of the things that we've gone through and the things we're going to go back to. Mm-hmm. My daughter has taken violin. That's probably going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Um, she's going to probably want to take piano lessons. She's shown interest in the drums. She's done baseball. She's done soccer. We know soccer is done for her. She's now doing volleyball, which she's excited about. Tennis. My son's doing soccer. He really likes dance, so we're probably going to get him into dance. And it's just this thing in parenting <laughs> that you do where you just bring them to all this. St- I don't have a solution. I'm just talking right now. I'm not... You're right on track. And it's just you do all these things and in hopes that one of them works. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're right. I mean, I'm not talking about your story. But your story's all over the place. But You're right on track with how you should be doing this. But here's the thing. Uh-huh. Here's the thing. Is like there are certain things that like you have to you have to put the gas on against your kids wishes ish. Because you got to be like, you need to give this a fair shake. But which of those things sure. do you do? Like, that's the hardest part about parenting with this p- particular subject is like gauging at what point do you put the gas on and what point do you go? So you're, you're right. We like, tried it. Let's walk away. Right. You try a bunch of stuff and see which thing they start to gravitate towards. And you're like, right, let's do that. Let's play more of that. Let's do more. Right. But then there's some of them that you know, I was like, I really think you'll enjoy this if you keep going. I think you're too young to appreciate. I'll give you a perfect example. Oh, I, I, understand. I played the piano for a year. I know you've never asked me to play. Uh, I played it for a year. I regret not continuing with it. And like, I was, but I did. I ask everybody, would you play piano for me? Like I've never played piano. No, Chris, oh, okay. At, d- during the holidays, all you do is play on your iPhone. Just play <laughs> songs from your iPhone. Never <laughs> ask me to sit down so everyone can gather around with a nog and yeah. ask me to play. Yeah. Tickle the ivory a little bit, Kev. I just do a entertain C, the I guess. just do a C scale. Um, <laughs> but it's like one of those things. Like I did piano for a year. Yeah, did it for a year. Wish you'd done told it for my 25 parents years. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, and they were like, "You got it, bud. You gave it a fair shake." Yeah, and now I'm an adult. Gone. Wow, that was stupid. I should have done it. I wish I could play piano that particular for you. one. Yeah, I'm not saying of all the things I gave up on. A great many things. In, I gave up on a great many things in life. And I feel good about most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Piano? Piano's not one of them. Lingering. So that's just my point. It's just like we're in this situation where you are just trying everything. I guess my point is what you want is, as a parent, you want that like, you want to see the light turn on. And yeah. then just to go, this is my passion. I'm yeah. going to do this. Uh, yeah. I just saw a thing from... Um, and, you know, Emily, the space gal, that's her name. Like space, the, the, space gal, yeah, online. The space gal. She's uh, she's going to space. Yeah. She's going to outer space. Yeah. And she made a video. It was very emotional. It got me teary-eyed. 
And it was like, and she showed a picture of her as a little girl. And she said, this has been my dream. I was like, my dream was to be Spider-Man until I was like 14. So like, where is this, where's this light coming from? Do you have any idea how many times I got bit by a spider on prayer? Nothing happened. Thank God I wasn't out here in Southern California. There's been a lot of black widow bites. We would have lost Kevin a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. (sighs) I don't even know (laughs) what I'm complaining about anymore. (laughs) I guess my point is like, I want, you want your kid to have that light turn on. Sure. But most of the time it doesn't, but that doesn't mean you should give up on it. But at what point do you go, you got to continue this? And what point do you go? Like, I know you can tell the times where you go, you're hating this. We're going to walk away from it. Yes, but let, me, let me, let me say something. Do, are you also feeling like you've potentially seen the light turn on a couple times and they've said, I don't want to do this anymore. And you're like, huh? Or also, and, or that. Like, I think I've seen this as well. Like, something like, I see so much of who I was as a little boy in my son. Uh Uh-huh. And the parts of me that would appreciate something like the the sports I played, Mm -hmm. and for the reasons I loved them so much, he says that he loves other things in the same way. Like, he gets the same feeling of, like, camaraderie or whatever, which Mm -hmm. is like... It's going to be hard to find the amount of camaraderie you'll get playing like a sport with other kids your age all together on a team. It's going to be very hard to duplicate yeah. that with mixed with like teaches you how to be a little bit competitive, learn something hard to do, could be a little bit scared to do. That's not only in sports, but like I definitely learned it in sports. And like I saw for a little bit of time, like a couple of things he's played, like it's, it's turned on. But then when it's like, not the thing we're going to do on Tuesday because we are in baseball and going to baseball practice, Mm -hmm. it starts to slip a little bit. Right. So are you saying like, is it a little bit like you're going to like it, man, we're going to sign up. Yeah. I think that like, you know, at some point you got to be the parent, right? At some point you're like, you're not Mm -hmm. their friend and you got to go, no, you're going to this. Cause you can't just quit literally everything. Right. Yeah. So there is also that factor you got to do. Yeah. Like my daughter, for instance, she was doing violin lessons and then uh, because of busy life, we had to skip a month and then it ended up being two months. And now we're like several months away from it. And yeah, I've mentioned it to my daughter. I was like, we need to get you back in violin lessons. And she's like, no, nah, I'm good. And it's like, mm, no, I think you're going to do it. <laughs> like, you were very much enjoying it every week. How much of that is because you bought a violin? <laughs> no, it's already paid for. So it doesn't matter. I mean, the amount of things that I have paid for. That's probably that is just burnt money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know what you mean. No, I I do think she was really enjoying it. She was coming out of practice every week enjoying it. And it's like, then there's that space. And then because life happens, life is so busy that you have to take breaks sometimes and certain things. Well, we're going on, we're going to be away these three Thursdays. Let's just take the month off, whatever. And yeah, now that she's like, I don't want to do that. That's just one of the examples that you're like, no, you're going to do it. It's just funny. The zero, the zero sum of it all. Like yeah. You're just like, I got to yeah. keep throwing these things at you. I hope one of them works. Luckily, we're doing them all through the rec league, so we're not like hemorrhaging money. Doing like, we're secret. doing the Beverly Hills Tennis Club. Yeah. yeah. Um, like we could get past the front door. <laughs> you, just wear, you just wear white headbands and bleach your hair. They're like, oh, our waiters don't wear those. You can go in through the staff entrance. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, like you're, it's, I mean, it's, Everything you're saying is valid, and it's but it's hilarious that because like, it really is like you're you are doing it right. You want to try that? Let's try it. You yep. want to try that? Try a new thing. Try another new thing. Let's try it. Um, and then the, the really the secret sauce is doing it through the rec league. Secret sauce because is doing it's it like the rec so league. much cheaper, and you still get the experience. You're still playing the sport. You're still doing the thing. I will like, say we're so excited we, about that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're excited about the aspect of like doing it the cheap way through rec league, and then hope but hoping the spark will come. But then yeah. I guess now we're getting to the point. With my daughter, not so much with my son. My son is still like, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, all right, I'll try that. That'll sure. be fine. He's just still kind of... Yeah, you could suggest like, he's just watching ping pong Pedro. He'd be like, lot. great. Yeah, he's... You can't disappoint that Best kid. imagination in the game. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I think we're reaching that point where it's like, all right, I think we're going to have to start... I'm not even right when I say that because I want to say that we're at the point where we're going to start to put our foot down, but it's like, no, you're also starting volleyball for the first time, tennis for the first time. Yeah. I don't know. The light might turn on on both of those. And it, it might turn on more than anything she's ever done. That's the exactly. thing. It's hard to weigh it all against the one, a couple of few experiences. You start to go like, you seem to like this the best. You want to try that again? In a worst case scenario. And some people will call this a best case scenario. Mm. I'm going to say worst case scenario. 
as um, somebody with um, of limited income. Worst case scenario, her li- her eyes light up on four things. Boof. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> when you hear somebody's like, yeah, I grew up, I took violin for 12 years, dance for is... six, uh, you know, Russian for nine. It was like, why? Yeah. Uh, why? Yeah. Did you ever sleep or yeah. do anything for yourself? Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the truth of it, right? She, the next thing might be the best thing she's ever done, and it's not even close. That's what's so frustrating about just parenting. <laughs> it's just the next thing might be her favorite, so you got to do the next thing. So do the next thing. That's why we're all so tired. I'm c- gotta in get like, to the next exit. I yeah, I find myself like being like a little jealous with, with that kind of stuff. I see, like, I have a little jealousy. I'm a little jealous of my kids' lives. Okay. When, when like, I don't know. You're just, know is you it, mean. like, just chasing the youth? You're like, man, you guys get to just, like, go to camp, meet new friends. They entertain you all day long. You know, go outside, play soccer, have lunch with your friends, come home. Like, you know, get stuck into baseball, meet new friends, learn how to play baseball. Can I draw? Yeah, you can draw. <laughs> you know, just, like explore the world right now it's all an oyster for them and everything's new yeah and yeah things are a lot scarier because so much of the rest of your life is unknown which is what the pair of the parents come in that's your job as a parent and all these things but like scary for the parent it's, it's super scary for the parent i try to act like it's not but it's really scary um but you know i just i like i i enjoy watching my kids like enjoy their youth of like trying new things and overcoming a scary thing or i like that perspective of the that perspective you get to gain as the parent of just like watching them, like enjoy new stuff and showing them the new things, taking them to tennis. Like, do you like tennis? Great. You don't like it? Great. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I partly agree with that. I, I don't envy like when she goes to school and she has a hard day and she's like, I don't like school. I just go, Oh yeah. In my head, I was like, yeah, cause it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean like, but I'll, I guess even, even more simply, like if you're thinking like, like I've talked about this before, I really want to learn how to play pickleball. Uh-huh. I don't have time to play. I don't have time right now. Sure, we don't have time. But I would love to just have that be like my thing today. <laughs> I'm gonna play pickle because it's like when it's your thing of tennis today. It's like we have tennis today. All right, talk about it the day before. Pick out what you're gonna wear. Talk about it a little bit during the day, and then it's like that's your thing that day. Where it's like I could probably do pickleball if I really committed to like once a week finding the hour when I go over to the rec league and to and do it. That that is but the th- mental load it takes to like add that to everything else is like I can't do that right now. That is a thing, and we touch on it a little bit in the live show. So come see us live um, mm-hmm. about about just like the double sided, like the double you know the both sides of the coin rather of sure. how kids were jealous of then they get they get to do all these things they don't realize and they never will and that's fine kids will always be this way. Yeah. It's like we drive them to to tennis and soccer and violin and volleyball and dance and they still get annoyed with you. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> they, I know. As grateful as they are, it should be more. If they only knew how to show it once in a while. So many things you do will not have perspective of until you have children. Oh, man. It is a I know. fact. It is an absolute and fact. And one of them is the, I mean, I guess it's selflessness. That's such a cocky word, but it's, it's like you don't want to be a bad parent. So Yeah, you don't want to be a bad you parent. You take them to the yeah. things. You take them to the things. You take them to the things. You drive them there. You take them to the things you know, that they, they enjoy go, themselves. That they go, I don't want to go to it. And you're like, I don't want to go to uh, you. <laughs> sorry. You don't want to go to it. I don't want to get eaten by mosquitoes on a bench watching you not try either. But here we are. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. I love them so much. Yeah. Angels of our world. Angels. No notes. Let's move on to the dumb dad. moments. Let's move on to the dumb dad moments. I got one. I hope so. It's yeah. been a week. My dumb dad moment was brought to you by doing an extra thing to entertain your kids believe it or not look at that right that's so dumb dad mo- all right so my dumb dad moment is <laughs> <laughs> we um uh, i can't remember if i talked about this on the podcast or not but on um for the fourth of july you guys were over at your parents uh-huh. 
And at my house, we invited uh, we invited the uh, our buddy Chris for do over who does yeah, the, talked the about music that. for us. With the and we did that. Yeah, I tried to watch an outdoor movie, and um, and it was like the fireworks. Just we couldn't even really hear the movie. It was sure. you know, hilarious. It was kind of a dumb dad thing there. Um, the dumb dad moment I had in relation to that occurred uh, two days ago, and my kids and I were out in the backyard having uh i had like breakfast and they were like watching something and they had like kind of had their breakfast with them and it was just like a nice oh, it was probably only 80 so it was like nice to sit outside for Sounds half an hour wonderful yeah i've been trying to do that in the morning just like get some outside time because yeah. it's like oh man it's just so hot it's just so hot and unenjoyable in the middle of the day and so i was having my coffee out there and then my wife came out and she was like watering um parts of the garden and such and I had I yet you said to wandering, just wandering the garden. She had this kind of, yeah, she, kind of just, she likes to come out in the morning and just kind of walk around in circles. Yeah, so it's a tight, house. it's actually kind of a tight little circle. I think our house is haunted. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then what's weird is that I'll leave her and then she will also be sitting inside. Does that make sense? It um, actually does. I've seen enough movies. About this. <laughs> I've seen enough movies. Like that. Um, she's out watering the garden and, um, I had yet to take down the, um, and I can't remember if I... You didn't finish that sentence at all. You just stopped. I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. We're <laughs> going to roll with it. Um, you just said, I forgot to take down the... Because well, I realized like, what I'm going to explain is that like that we use these uh, stands that we got off like Amazon to like um, mm-hmm. put up a green screen. It's like two poles and then two rods that go in between them. And you kind of like cinch it all together and you can stretch a piece of fabric across it. And usually you and I use it as like... Yeah, uh, imagine a giant a green frame screen, or something. Or it's what we put our presser... Uh, we put our presser banner on. It's just like yeah. this big frame, basically. Yeah. So when my, my wife and I were looking into getting like a projector to like watch movies outside, I was like, well, we already have the screen thing solved. We just got to go get like a big white sheet of fabric because we can use the stand that we have. Yeah. So anyway, we went and got like blackout cloth, like white, like room blackout drapery cloth just mm-hmm. in a, on a huge roll of it. And I just stretched it across. It worked great. Mm-hmm. I had yet to take that down. Mm. And so that was what my tangent was, which was that you can kind of make your own screen if you have like a little frame or something like that. It mm-hmm. was very easy to do. I just clamped it on there. I had yet to take that down, uh, which, you know, it was like, <laughs> it's hot here every day. I wasn't worried about the weather ruining it. It was just like left it up that night and never went outside the next morning and like broke all that down. Mm-hmm. And um, as we're sitting outside, the kids are both uh, in these two like patio chairs pretty close to each other probably like they're probably like two or three feet away from each other in these big patio chairs yeah and the wind blew this thing over and landed on them but the only part that landed on them was the white sheet the frame of it like the metal frame of it landed just on the outside of both of them oh nice very lucky yeah would have been a much dumber dad moment if they'd been hit by that to be fair it wouldn't have hurt them it was scared them I don't know. The metal pole, if it hits them, that would probably hurt. Yeah. But rub some dirt on it. You're already outside. That's true. That's true. Dust, really, because there's no water anywhere near us. That's true. Um, (laughs) Rub some dust in it. Get some dirt in your hair. (laughs) Sneeze it out. (laughs) So, yeah, that was my dumb dad moment, which is like, I I should have. What was their reaction? Did they love it? Scared the crap out of them. Okay. They They didn't laugh? Yeah, they did after because they didn't necessarily feel the fear of what actually could have happened. Sure, that's parenting. But I look over and they're like under this white sheet with like a whole metal. Fr- it's like the it's literally like the cartoon where the f- building is falling over and you like brace for it and like the window is where you are. Yeah. So the whole thing falls on the ground, but you're lucky. 1920s film and classic cartoon joke. That was what it was like. The whole thing fell around him and they were just like the white. They were like lift up the white cloth. Like oh, what happened? Did you, and I was like, I got lucky. That's what happened. Did I got you, really a, lucky just now. After it landed on them, did you jump up speedily? Or did you go, oh, Evan. I sauntered over. You sauntered over. <laughs> yeah, I sauntered okay. over. And I was like, I think, he, I think he might have even said what happened. I said, I got lucky. Because it was like, right as soon as I looked over, I was like, oh, 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 oh man. <laughs> that could have been bad. <laughs> Yeah, you know, pick up after yourself. Pick up after yourself. Practice what you preach, you idiot. You go in there and talk to your kids about cleaning your room, and then you just, like, leave this. (laughs) I got to put it up. It's not what they mean by raising the bar, Evan. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. 
Let's pause for uh, the audience to collect themselves. Before we Hold for it. applause. <laughs> Pull over and clap. Thank you. Thank you. I want to accept this award. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just a, my cup. Um, <laughs> my Dumb Dad moment is brought to you by the beach. We made a presser. This will have been two pressers ago once this comes out. About going to the beach. Yeah. And then, not that I'd never been to the beach before, but was like, let's make this a reality and go to the beach. So we went to the beach this weekend. And it was almost uh, a dumb dad moment for for mom and dad because we knew it was going to be a hot day. Mm -hmm. Got everybody ready, packed up everything, made sure you had everything. You got wipes, you got sunscreen, got snacks, everything, blah, blah, blah. Get in the car, we go. And we get to our normal beach area spot. There's like two spots we hit up. It's either Malibu or Santa Monica. Sure. They're right next to each other. So they're the two main beaches but here. <laughs> well, we can go all the way down to like whatever. When you hit up Zuma. You can do that. You can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those are the two main ones. Um, we hit, Long we, Beach. You can hit up Long Beach. That's so far away. So far away. Malibu was so overcast and like 70. Perfect. And we were like, oh, no. Oh, but you get cold because of the wind. It wasn't perfect. It was terrible. Crazy. Like I know anybody's listening. <laughs> I know. But 70 like, is complaining. But like you don't want to just love for that you to be don't, tomorrow. But you don't want to go to the beach with it seventy and overcast. <laughs> yeah, sure. You, nobody wants that anywhere. Sure. Like, yeah, it's the worst. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's breeze, cold. It feels colder than it is because you get the ocean breeze. So I was like, oh, let's drive down. So we drove down to Santa Monica area to be like, maybe that's better. We were right. It was better. So a <laughs> dumb dad moment avoided. Ooh, averted. And it was warmer because the sun was out. It felt great. It was awesome. Then we get there, and I was just – it was like a perfect beach day. So because of that, I just got a little too excited. You know, man? I just get excited. You know, you talked about looking at your kid and envying him. Ah, no. Live your life like I do. Become him. Become him. I have, some, yeah. have, have too much fun. Yeah. Uh, my daughter was, like, <laughs> digging and uh, – we were really close to the water because, like, my daughter, she's at that age when we go to the beach. It's just, and we, again, we talked about this in the presser. We're at the beach. It's just, I don't get to sit in that chair that I brought. No, yeah. I am just at the waves back and Come forth. Come run away from the waves with me. All right. When they're tired, we go in. I go to, I sit on the chair for all of 10 seconds and they go, Dad, can you bury me? You know? And yeah. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. Can I have something to eat? Yeah. Let me get out and figure all that out. Uh-huh. Now, can you bury me? Great. And... Yeah, then you're doing that thing. I think another creator, I'd love to give him credit. He did a TikTok or Instagram about it. <laughs> it was a good video. Or it was just how parents, it was parents at the pool, but it is parents at the beach too. You're just thinking, oh, they'll sleep good tonight. Like, that's all you're just thinking. Yeah. Oh, they'll sleep good tonight. So you got to, you got to help them. You're going to play with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. So my daughter was digging and then I was started, I was like, do you want to dig to the ocean? That was my idea. I'm like a child. And she was like, what can you do that and i was like yeah you dig deep enough you can hit the ocean it's from my many years of being in hampton beach new hampshire yeah, yeah. and we did we dug to the to the water uh, from the dry sand from the dry sand um <laughs> if you're close enough to the water it's not that hard to do no 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 um so you drink through the dry sand get through the and you just keep going 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 and then you start to see it's like it's getting well it's getting now, moist now, down now this oh now there's a little puddle of water and then you keep digging and then you just dig this big hole and then you just make it a bigger hole. And then the water kind of makes the sides fall apart. So it easily just gets bigger. <laughs> and then the kids like were jumping in it. And then I was like, well, don't do that. And then they were like, bury me in here. And I was like, not, no, that's no, that's going to make it suction. And my wife told me like something awful happened to a kid recently in this very situation. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it was like one of those things where the alarm bells are going off and you're like, yeah. I shouldn't be doing this. Why did I just do this? Because I was like, you're making a giant suction and a sinkhole at the same time. Yeah. You and you and you very carefully over the course of probably an hour and a half or so taught them how to do this. Yeah. It was just well, in my defense, <laughs> when like the apocalypse or whatever comes, they know how to make dig for a well. So in a way salt water. You can't do that. You can't drink salt water. It, it, wherever they are. They know to dig deep <laughs> enough you'll find water. And that's what I taught them. You just might have to dig for longer. You might have to dig for longer, but you can do it. 
Yeah. Just try. You might start to feel hot. You can find lava. And once you get through that, you get through the another other side, you go all the way to the other side of the world. There might be water. And suddenly over. you poke your head up and then you fall because everything's upside down. I've only learned things from cartoons. Uh, <laughs> So then I had to like nervously get them out of there sure. because I was like, ah, oh, this is a bad, this is a dumb dad moment. This is dumb. Get out. And they were just like, well, no, we want to play. And I had to be like, suddenly go from fun dad to like, I'm very scared now because you've seen the sides fall off from the water. Yeah. It's just getting bigger. Yeah. And you know, if it does collapse, it's going to be a suction with the water and stuff. It's going to, then you're going to have to dig them out and they'll probably be panicking. So just be a bad, you know, be mean dad for a second. Like, get out of the thing that I made and made you do with me. So I got them out. And then, then we filled in the hole, and then you have to, you have to fill it in for a while because the sand keeps kind of eating itself, and you yeah. don't want somebody to fall through that, so you kind of keep <laughs> packing it in. <laughs> yeah, it was packed. It was packed. And you unpacked it. And I unpacked it. Yeah. Um, and then I later needed to kind of unpack some stuff about myself. <laughs> uh, so on the ride home, when you were quiet, just quiet on the ride home. On the ride home, um, and then the other like dumb dad moment. Was so it was it was a great oh, like a day for the water because some days you go to play in the ocean and like the riptides really trying to just r- pull you out yeah but the water was coming in there was no riptide really at all it was a little bit of a pull when the water would go out but it was not like well, careful this is scary at all it was fine so my daughter and I went out like a little bit deeper than we usually do like for her it was like no past your belly button nowhere mm-hmm. past that and she was like okay. So we would go out there and then she wanted to ride the waves. So her and I are both like riding the waves. I'm trying to do a little body surfing. A little body surfing, which was funny because I'm almost 40 and I've only ever done it with like boogie boards. I've yeah. never really successfully done it with my body <laughs> ever. I've done it where you like jump with the waves. Yeah. Like dive forward with the waves and go maybe five, six feet. You know yeah. what I mean? And then it's like, oh, that's all you got. I learned this weekend, and again, just giddy, like should have grown up, maybe needs therapy, definitely needs therapy. (laughs) I realized that if you put your head down when you jump with the water Uh and you just hold your breath because you're underwater, that wave will take you all the way to the shore. Like, to where you get sand in your nose. You get sand. Yeah, but you just got, you put your hands down a little bit so they hit first. Yeah. Uh, Come on, amateur hour. Um, He's a pro now. Pro now. (laughs) Pro body serving circuit. So I did that one time and I stopped myself because I was like, whoa, I think I could make it all the way to the end. So I went back to my daughter and I was like telling her, like, put your head down. She's like, I'm not going to do that. And I was like, it's fun. I'll show you. And then I did it head down all the way to the shore, all the way. It was like insane. Rode for uh, forever. (laughs) Then I turned around and my daughter's in the middle of the ocean by herself. I got up, like looked at her to see like what her reaction was. I was like, she's alone in she's the alone ocean. She does know in how to ocean. swim, um, but they just left her way yeah, farther. But what th- you did was talk your head underwater so you couldn't see or hear anything. Oh yeah, yeah. This is one of those like you pop your set head yourself up. up on the shore there like a beach whale and then turn around to see if she thought it was cool. I mean, and we're she's out there in the ocean. Where are my tax dollars going? I mean, if we have these lifeguards, you know what I mean. And that's what they're for. You watch my kid. Why I absolutely and shred. You tell me if you thought that was cool, bro. Shred these waves. I dare you to do better. With your cool muscles. <sighs> but like caramelized, beautiful summer tan. And it was funny because then it was funny because I don't think my wife even clocked it as a dumb dad moment. But when we were driving home, she was like, "What were you guys doing in the ocean?" Because she was like with my son. And I was like, oh, we were riding the waves. I was trying to show her how to ride the wave because I realized if you put your head down, you can go all the way to shore. And she was like, oh, that makes sense. Because at one point I looked back and she was like by herself, pretty by, like pretty deep out. She's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, no, I remember I clocked that as a mistake <laughs> <laughs> right away. <laughs> I like how, how, uh, I can't play I pickleball. <laughs> Evan, I don't have time. So when there's time in what we're doing, you find your pickleball. Find your, find your find your pickleball. Find your pickleball. Yeah, I love how simple you have become in entertaining yourself as well. Like dig a hole. <laughs> Digging a hole is fun. In the ocean, you might find a cool shell. You're not wrong. I'm just simplifying it because it's funnier that way. Dig a hole. <laughs> dig a hole. Play with the water. Play with the water. I'm ready to go home now. Are there more snacks?
What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing with 3D printers? Right a wave. The fun is out there. Fun's out there, guys. Go find it. Go, Go find, find your it. pickleball. I have such a sunburn on my back. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> and your chest is red, too, because it's just like a few layers gone from it's the sun. Quite a, yeah. Exfoliating. But guys, go to the beach with your kids. Just don't have... T- there is a definition of too much fun. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Kevin had too much fun. It's a little too close to the sun. That's what they say. A little too close to the... Uh, a little too close to the shore while your break. kid was in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> a little too close to the parking lot. <laughs> I, I want to say I'm trying my best, but I don't even think that. <laughs> You're not sure? I don't think that's a passable answer. I think you were show your work. Your, no, I show think, your work. Show your work. I think you were doing your best to have the most fun you could have. I had a great time. I had a better time. Yeah. I had a better time than everyone that day <laughs> on the whole beach. Yeah, I had a better time. I defy anybody that in my family to have more fun than me at the beach. Can't do it. Can't. Do, can't be done. You could equate it, but it takes a lot of effort. Yeah. And you're not sitting in the chair. You need to go out there and dig a hole. You have to bring a chair because the f- the first time you don't bring it, the kids are not going to want to go in the ocean or whatever. Yeah, and, and then you'll be just laying on a towel uncomfortably or trying to sit up or yeah, sitting like kind of egg shaped your body. Do you have a uh, what do you bring to the beach? You bring beach blankets. You bring a cooler. Yeah, we bring. What we, do you get? Because it's like six hundred pounds of stuff you're carrying. You know, a mile and a half from the parking lot across hot sand was our joke, but that's the truth. Like, what are you bringing? You try to do it as light as you can, but it's one of those things like pack as light as you want. You still got a lot of stuff with you. We tried a new one this time, which was we brought snacks because for us, it's like, you know, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. To the, beach. Well, the first thing you pack is a sense of adventure. <sighs> that was that was packed when I was born. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chairs. You got backpack chairs. Well, what I'm going to say is we pack snacks, kind of give the kids snacks on the road as uh-huh. they please. We have a cooler backpack. We could have put a couple ice packs in, some drinks in there. Yep. And then we stop. This is the first time we did it, but it's definitely a, feels like a pro move. Then you bring one or two other snacks you're going to bring on the beach. Nothing big, like watermelon or whatever. Yeah. And then you go to a sandwich shop and get a sub, and then you get to the beach and you eat that right away. Oh, yeah. This is the first thing you do. And, um, and then you just have like a cooler backpack. So you don't really... But yeah, we bring beach blankets, chairs, sand toys... Uh, yeah, hole digging stuff. Do you have <laughs> hole digging stuff? <laughs> I got two shovels on the end of my wrist right here. Uh, oh yeah. Um, do you bring anything that's like an umbrella for shade or anything? I I did for a while. We have a really small umbrella. We stopped bringing it. It's pointless. Yeah, we bought this umbrella that kind of just sucked. And yeah. then, like two years ago, we were I was at like IKEA and like by the before I'm getting checked out, it's like um. Your tent. It's like a tent, but yeah, it like the thing everybody's doing now. I get it. Opens really quick, like uh, you know, it's like it unfolds and yeah. is is at its full Twisting, shape. Twisting, you know, you twist it, shut, and zip it shut or whatever. And that thing seems to help quite a bit. It's like a, it's not very big, and you put like there's like four pockets. You shove them full of sand so it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. And it's like things pretty money just to have like a little bit of shade. Kids really like that. They sit in that thing and have their, you know, their snacks or whatever. But uh, that's the only thing we bring other than that. I know it's, it's, but it's always like, and it's not necessarily 500 pounds of stuff, but it's like all the stuff you got to bring to the beach with you is like awkward to carry. And then there's like a bunch of the stuff. So it's all like, there's no way to like, that's why the beach is hard. Cause at least camp is difficult. At least cause camping is a pain in the ass, but it's like you get two to three days day, like get there, do all the pain in the ass work. Yeah. Enjoy yourself for two to three days. Yeah. Then do the pain in the ass again. And there's a some there's a, somewhat of a sense of like earning your keep or accomplishing. Like we're working to survive. If you, I mean, it's it's obviously depending on the camp, camping or glamping you do or whatever, sure. how much effort you're gonna put in. But I mean, and I don't mean surviving in the wilderness, but like, sure. If you put the tent together. Yeah. If you build the fire. If you, it's all starts to feel like, yeah, we're really kind of getting some work done here to yeah. earn our keep for the couple days. The beach is like, lug all this shit all the way down over to where our campsite's going to be when you find one. And then it's busy. And then you're walking around trying to find a little space that you, maybe your family could acquire, which is now like 300 yards further than you wanted to walk. Yeah. And then you finally like 
you could do this at the beach where you get to where you wanted to go and you just let your shoulders go down. Oh, and like everything falls off your body onto the sand. And now and then like then you get like three hours. And then it's like, all right. Let's dig a hole. <laughs> dig a hole. Let's dig a hole. Hope your arms aren't too tired because you gotta pick all this stuff back up and drag <laughs> it back to where you came. <laughs> the beach is great. Go to the beach. Beach is great, no notes. <laughs> Find your pickleball. Find your pickleball. Guys, if you got your dumb dad moments, let us know. Write in and tell us yours, dumbdadpod at gmail.com, or you can DM us. Yep. We are at the Dumb Dads on Instagram. That's also our handle across all social media. That's right. We are the Dumb Dads on YouTube. We can watch full episodes of this podcast. Also, write a review. Write a review. We'll read it on this very podcast. Would love to do it. Thanks to everyone on SoundCloud for yep. the music for this podcast and my incredible wife, Annie, for editing this podcast. You have a joke to take us out? I got a joke for you. Ready? Uh-huh. What did the beach say to the tide when it came in? I don't know. I was kind of salty about it. Long time no see. Mm, nice. Okay. That's the first one in a very, very long time when I read it. I was like, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. bye. Welcome to the world, little one. Welcome to life. How do I stop this? The Dumb Dad Podcast is proudly presented by Bet Online.